My last video was part 1 of my climb to masters in Americas where I showcased Solani Dark and Control, the deck that I used to climb from platinum to diamond. This video is a continuation of that journey and as usual, I'm still using a very spicy deck. When Gwen was released back in the Forces From Beyond expansion, players immediately thought of her hallowed package's synergy with Irelia's Blade Dance package. However, this strategy didn't find any success and it hasn't been explored since then. The final expansion of 2023, World Ender, came with some new spicy support cards for both Gwen and Irelia, which finally makes this archetype competitive in Ranked Ladder. Today's video will be my full guide on Irelia Gwen, the deck that I used to climb from Diamond to Masters at 65% win rate. After reaching Masters, I played the deck again for 10 games, this time in Master Rank, and had a final score of 7 wins and 3 losses. All the games in today's video will teach you how to play this fun combo deck depending on what cards you get in your opening hand. There will also be a detailed deck guide and mulligan guide in the middle of the video. As always, if you end up liking this video, make sure to leave a like and leave a random or non-random comment. Press that subscribe button so that you will always be notified of the best Legends of Runeterra guides on the internet. Also, I'm just a few hundred subscribers away from 10,000 subscribers, so you can help me reach that next milestone by subscribing if you haven't done so yet. Nora Evelyn? We should be okay against Nora Evelyn. Hopefully. I don't think I keep the Black Flame. We just want a stronger board overall. Okay, so we go for Boisterous Hose, Butler Butler, Pressure with Ribbon Dancer. Hey. We, go, we have Gwen too. This is a pretty good hand, good hand. Hallowed units, Gwen and Blade Dances. Ain't no shadows in here. We have a lot of pressure incoming. So we don't have a problem attacking with the Phantom Butler. Because it's a fearsome attacker, they can't block. I think I want to preserve Boisterous Host as a blocker for next turn. Because they, they will have a strong unit with the Stubborn Husk, right? Ooh, Quietus. Quietus could be our Evelyn killer. We could Phantom Butler. Why not? Please make yourself right at home. Busy tonight. Okay. So it might be an Evelyn. So if it is an Evelyn, we don't want a Gwen because if if they Evelyn here, they're gonna have a five five blocker. So we don't want him to have that. So I think I just open attack with my two hallowed units, deal six damage. Cool. It was an Evelyn. Spell shield too, huh? Mind if I slip into something a little more painful? It's fine, it's fine. We will have an opportunity to kill the Evelyn later. If the Gwen dies, we have the Eternal Dancers. Back on the prowl. If they don't play a unit here, we just quiet us. Yeah, there, there's no way they don't. Follow me. I know where I'm going. That's fine. Lights out. Hi. We just block with our Boisterous Host, I think. They burn my mana. They think it's not okay. But it's actually okay for me. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to quiet this. Ribbon Eternal Dancers plus Black Flame is also really strong. Like I, I could set up Eternal Dancers this turn. Evelyn's champion spell maybe? That doesn't work that way. I think that doesn't trigger husks, right? 
If it's Evelyn's champion spell, they shouldn't play it. They should just let this resolve and then play another Evelyn. One last kiss. Yeah, exactly. Worry. It's not my first time. Welcome to the team. Lights out. Wake up. Allow me. So I think I Eternal Dancers and then I play Black Flame plus Ribbon Dancers. And if I do that, I think I want one of my butlers to die. Start accumulating hallowed stacks. Right? I shall need my tools. Because I want to be able to revive something with Eternal Dancers. So far none of my units have died yet. That's it. Yeah, this is strong. I like the black flame. But they have the elusive husk. And uh, an 8 attack, 7 attack Evelyn. We could just bounce the Evelyn too. That's a lot of damage. Do I need to bounce? No, no, no. We have to black flame first. Maybe they get greedy here. Save this for us. They get greedy. Well, just do your best, okay? So we know that they don't have a counter to this. Because they already used sec second Evelyn. I don't want an elusive Evelyn running around. I don't want to take too much damage. Take a load off. This way, we're accumulating hallowed stacks for our Gwen attack. The, the problem we had earlier was that their, their blockers were too strong. But if we're doing it like this, we're starting to accumulate hallowed stacks. That's fine, because my, my thing goes back. And I think my Eternal Dancers revives an Eternal Dancers. I think my Eternal Dancers revives on Eternal Dancers. Which revives on Eternal Dancers? Which revives on Eternal Dancers? Oh, other than Eternal Dancers. Okay, never mind. So there's no loop that could happen. Ooh. Welcome to the team. So what do you revive? It's just that one. Huh? Hmm. I want to be able to kill the Yordle Captain. I think this is worth it. Probably worth it. I don't think it's worth it to Ribbon Dancer yet. They have lots of jump blocks. That's why the, the Dancers are not yet worth it. Elusive again? Come on. If we're in danger of getting OTK'd. I have the tendency to get. Are we in danger of getting OTK'd? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, it's 14 damage. We have to go for Dragon Ambush now. Or else we're dying. The elusive husks are a problem. Okay. Overwhelm husk? Stop! Not scout, not scout. It's fearsome, it's just fearsome. Spin it round, throw it down. Take a load off. I I'd like to glimpse beyond, but I might get pokey stick.
19 damage, we're okay. You should 100% attack with that one. All in the shoulders. You'll hurt somebody. Pokey stick? That's a pokey stick. I don't want my Oh, thank you. Thank God I was patient with my glimpse beyond. Oh, it's over, right? We foyer and then open attack and then dragon ambush. Okay, they have a lot of blockers, but we will life steal again with the dragon ambush. We want the glimpse beyond again, probably. I think if they had pokey stick, they would have used it, right? We need the glimpse beyond. We can't play around the second pokey stick anymore. I, I think I might have won if I used Dragon Ambush last turn. Maybe I was too greedy. Now they have two blockers for it. I'm healing up a lot. That Evelyn is fucking huge. That's 12 damage for now. We can block some of it. As long as it's not elusive. Oh, it's overwhelmed. Okay. I think I misplayed my last defense turn. I should've just used Dragon Ambush, forced him to block and then go for a strong open attack. But then even when we open a dock, they had a burst speed. They had wait ways to get burst speed blockers, so it would have been the same probably. As long as I can keep my Gwen alive, I think I will win. I love it when they scream. So we have to block you and you. We lose. We lose. It's sad, it's sad. Block here, block here. GG. They had too many chump blocks. Isokaru with the Zillion. Zillion together with Bilgewater and Shurima. Okay. Is double opulate for your ever bad? Let's try it out. We don't have any harrowings in this deck. So I like the idea of double opulent foyer. I haven't tried the double opulent foyer opener yet. I'm looking forward to it. This theoretically should exert a lot of pressure. Theoretically. Ooh, this is a great hand if it's just strictly talking about hallowed stacks. There's nothing more we could wish for. I think I play Irelia later on. We don't need to rush Irelia. I think it's better to set up the Opley and Foyers first on turn 3. Turn 3 or turn 4. Okay. You have to block this, right? Okay. Another Forsaken Bakai. Weird that they didn't block the Boisterous Host. It must mean that they might have a the way to deal with it outside of blocking they might have a zillion in hand but if they already had zillion in hand wouldn't they just play it now 
I'm thinking maybe they didn't block it because time bombs could deal with it. Maybe they just didn't want me to get hallowed procs. Hmm. Okay, weird. Very weird that they didn't block, but okay. So we, we're using opulent for you defensively, which is great. We also have black flame. That's so good. Black Flame plus Opian Foyers. Yes, yes, strike up the band. We just do it like this. Oh, they have Reavers Row. That's why they were they were saving their. That's why they were saving. Oh, it's a reverse row deck without Talia. That was why they were saving their one drop. Okay. Interesting. Now I see you. Okay, this makes things interesting. They're removing their blockers, which is fine for me. So what do I want to do here? I could set up Irelia and Phantom Butler, which is the most mana efficient, I think. And the next turn, I could go for Gwen plus Black Flame plus Blade Dance. I think I like that idea. Where they fall, freedom grows. I don't know if they have any interaction, but if they do, we have Twin Disciplines as backup. We will have a full board of landmarks next turn, and they, they, they only have two blockers. I think I'll probably use the Black Flame on Phantom Butler. That's fine, that, that thing can't block. Maybe we need to save Phantom Butler as a... Oh. I think we're at the point where I need to replace one of my opulent foyers with a Gwen. So much to see. And then we that? use Black Flame on one of the Ghastly Bands. I think we need to reserve Phantom Bl Butler as a b blocker next turn. I, I can't greed it out with the Redeemed Prodigy plus Black Flame. I just can't. I simply can't. Oh, what if I use it on Gwen and just keep draining my opponent? That could also be a good play. I really need to save Phantom Butler as a blocker. I just don't want to get OTK'd. That's the goal. Will they block this way? Will it be the play to block flame the Gwen? I'm liking the idea. It will be exerting a lot of pressure. Let's go, people. I'm so scared of what I'm about to do. What if it's just Irelia? Does block flaming the Irelia do anything? Haven't I been here before? <sighs> Maybe not block flaming at all is the play instead. Maybe we just make sure we have enough here, some blockers. And then go from there. So if I black flame now. If I black flame on the Gwen, it will keep draining them. Then next turn it will drain them again and force them to block. But we don't need the drain. We only have three blockers this turn. I I'm gonna black flame the Phantom Butler. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. I think two fearsome blockers is enough. We will go for an immediate ribbon dancer next turn. Six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. It's not yet lethal. 
It's not yet lethal. We, we can block. It's a lot. 6, 12, 18. So we're down to sacrifice the Irelia. Oh, it's lethal! Oh, it's lethal! Oh, it's lethal! So it didn't matter that I saved enough blockers, huh? Is it lethal? The forest strikes. Mortality is madness. Is it lethal? It is lethal. GG. They got us. Ah, uh, what could I've done there? I don't think I could have done anything because my fearsome blockers would have get removed. I think maybe I needed to force out more blocks last turn. No, they would have just blocked with a zillion anyway. GG's, GG's. Nice game. We're up against uh, Fizz Yumi. It's actually a deck that I plan to feature on the channel. But I think it's too all-in in a combo. Yes, you will win a lot of games with it. But there are just some unplayable hands like if you don't draw a unit. And I think it's fairly easy to play. So we have a pretty okay hand here. We have double, double early hallowed units plus Gwen. Ribbon Dancer to, could exert some pressure later on. If we will be able to draw the Black Flame here, it would be great. We would probably use it on the Redeemed Prodigy. But for now, we're passing because nothing's happening. If my opponent doesn't have a 2 cost unit, we will redeem Prodigy. They might have the Librarian, the Assistant Librarian. So we just go Phantom Butler here and we probably want to trade down. If nothing's happening, we just try to get the more hallowed procs with Redeem Prodigy here. It's likely for them to buff up the Assisted Librarian and block the Redeem Prodigy to prevent a second attack, right? But they might, they could also go for a... Like if we do this, they could block here, block here, plus a buff on the Assistant Librarian. Which means we don't have a unit to block the open attack next turn. And we don't want the Assistant Librarian to be able to strike our Nexus. So I think I'm going to attack with the Redeemed Prodigy here, just to get the Hallowed, a Hallowed, Hallowed Proc, and then we leave one blocker behind, just so we can contest this Assistant Librarian. Yeah, this is fine. Ruthless Raider is not a card that I see usually ran in these decks. You best Mandel Commander is another card that I don't usually see. Hmm. Interesting. So I can Gwen and then Irelia next turn. Where do I, start? At the beginning, Adam. I think Irelia is safe here. Okay. So we just block here. And we will try to kill the Assistant Librarian while we can. With the Vile Feast. So while the, the opponent can't buff it, we go for this one. And then we can Irelia next turn. While still having enough mana for Blade Dance. Flawless Duet. Oh, we could also actually go for Boisterous Host. We have a pretty decent turn here. We have two Hallow Deaths. So I think I go for Boisterous Host plus Flawless Duet. And then we can start uh, pressuring with Ribbon Dancer on the subsequent turns. We could also go for Eternal Dancers to revive a Hallowed unit. So this has two, so Troll Chant would be able to contest my Gwen actually. If Gwen dies, it's fine, I think. Because if Gwen dies, we just revive her with Eternal Dancers on the following turn. They take those blocks, which means our Flawless Duet will have a strong Hallowed attack next turn. I mean this turn. Yeah, we're definitely winning this one. So they take the block on the 4-1 with the Owlcat. 
And then next turn, we play Eternal Dancers. We go for the open attack and use Double Ribbon Dancers on turn 7. Cool. So we go Eternal Dancers here. Go for the open attack. We can actually go for Defi Defiant Dance plus Ribbon Dancer on the following turn. Which is pretty damn strong. Uh, They don't have any interaction. I don't think I'm forced to, to do anything here. I think I pass first. If they skip the attack, then fine. Okay. So that's all they're gonna do for the attack. We Eternal Dancers set up for a strong open attack. Cool. We can also go Flawless Duet plus Double Ribbon Dancer. That might be the play. Uh, we will revive the Hallowed Unit with Eternal Dancers. The, the Phantom Butler. So once it dies, our our blade dances will be stronger. I think my opponent doesn't have troll chant because if they had troll chant, they would have used it already. Why? Why didn't they you me before? I think that's fine. We have lots of free attacks. We can take our time here. So Gwen will probably die, which is fine. Ooh. But they run out of mana now, and we get more hallowed stacks for our subsequent attacks. I think we just go Flawless Duet plus Double Ribbon Dancer. I think we go for that. And I, I don't think there's any way we're losing from 16 HP by next turn. So we always go for Flawless Duet first. And then Double Ribbon Dancer. We can also decide to Defiant Dance or Dragon Ambush depending on what our opponent does. I think this will force out blocks already. Wow, he's dead. He's actually dead if he's gonna use all his mana here. Okay. So, in what way do we want to kill him? Do we want to go for the Defiant Dance or do we want to go for... Ribbon Dancers. F five Hallowed Deaths? I think I want to go for Ribbon Dancers. Death by Ribbon Dancers. I think just in case they had a 1-drop, it was safer to defy and dance, but this is more fun. Got him. So we're on a 3-0 win streak right now in Masters. As you've seen from the games, Irela Gwen is a combo deck that makes the most out of deaths from hallowed units by attacking multiple times through the blade dance mechanic. I attribute the success of this deck to three cards. Redeemed Prodigy, Opulent Foyer, and the Black Flame. Redeemed Prodigy and Opulent Foyer are two engines that make it very easy and very efficient for Gwen decks to quickly accumulate hallowed stacks in the early game. The Black Flame allows this deck to get even more hallowed stacks by duplicating hallowed units like Redeemed Prodigy, Gwen, or Eternal Dancers. The Black Flame, when combined with the Blade Dance mechanic, can also threaten powerful attacks on the opponent's attack turns. Defiant Dance causes tempo swings when used on expensive units like Aatrox. Outside of Blade Dance cards, Dragon Ambush is another card that gives extra attacks while also healing the Nexus with hallowed stacks. The rest of the deck is comprised of the usual utility, control, and removal tools from Ionia and Shadow Isles. For the mulligan, you're always going to keep Redeemed Prodigy, a copy of Gwen, a copy of Opulent Foyer, and up to two copies of Boisterous Host plus Phantom Butler. If you already have a good hand, you can consider keeping other combo pieces or utility cards depending on the matchup that you're facing. Quietus is an efficient removal spell against Ezreal or Seraphine. Deny is a game-winning card against big spells like Field Rush. Dragon Ambush is great against aggro decks, assuming that you already have some early units. Vile Feast is obviously another great card against aggressive strategies. Irelia, Moonlit Glenkeeper, and the Black Flame are combo pieces that could be considered for keeping if you already have a great hand.
We have another game against Red Gwen. We lost the Red Gwen match previously. But we might be able to make a comeback. We have the Redeem Prodigy Phantom, Phantom Butler opener. Which is usually enough to win. Usually. I think I go Boyster's Host. I could think about co using... Okay, we pass first. I don't want to trade here because if they have Phantom Butler... We could trade the Phantom Butler, but, but, but this is fine, this is fine. We can just be conservative for now. If they don't go Redeem Prodigy... I, uh, I'm gonna go Redeem Prodigy here. I'm gonna make them have Quietus. I didn't want to go to play Redeem Prodigy last turn because they could Phantom Butler. And then suddenly we don't have a blocker. Okay. I can chill. I don't want them to give a I don't want them to get an extra hallowed stack. Opulent Foyer puts them ahead. Dangerously ahead. Oh, what a bold move to glimpse beyond there. Double glimpse beyond. Okay, understandable. I think they could have used the glimpse beyond better, but who am I to tell? I think I just open attack next turn. There's no need to summon anything because if I play something, they just respond with something of their own. We just take the six damage here. Double foyers? That puts them ahead. That's very scary. The black flame isn't too useful because I don't have any blade dances yet. But this double foyer is what's losing me the game. If only she could see me. Oh, is everyone partnering up? What a joy. I think we will still live. Refreshment. But they're exerting a lot of pressure with these hallowed attacks. I don't want my Gwen to get damaged. I think I'm gonna go for a Black Flame on the Eternal Dancer's play. They're thinking about maybe Vile Feast plus something on my Gwen. I don't think I have any better targets. I, I wanna do this so that they they'll be forced to block with their Gwen next turn. Third Glimpse Beyond? Okay. So we have to race them down now. It's no longer about the value in hand, it's about if I can utilize the Black Flame plus Ribbon Dancers to finish this game. I shall need my tools. They definitely have to block with Gwen. I just hope they don't preemptive uh, Ravenous Flock on the Eternal Dancers. Vile Feast. Okay. I think we just won. I think with this, what we can do is we can instead Black Flame on the Gwen. And I think that's what we're gonna do. Black Flame on the Gwen can start draining them for crazy. I'm gonna use Quietus first on the Spiderling to force them to block with Gwen. Never play fair. What is this? That's fine. Does it affect me? This might hurt. Doesn't this just win?
I think this just wins. Because they'll only have one blocker left. And they have to get to defend against two attacks plus a drain. Let's dance. And then I use Ribbon Dancer next turn. So they don't have mana for harrowing. Which is great for us. But I think the Gwen Drain next turn will be enough to kill them. Let the bloodshed begin. It kills them, right? The Gwen Gwen Drain will drain them for a total of 4 HP. So they have to work on killing me this turn. I can pass. I can definitely afford to pass. I can definitely afford to pass for now. They're afraid they should be. Are we in danger at all if we stay at 3 HP? They could use Noxion Fervor. We just do this. And the, the, the Gwen... The, we just bounce the spider, they don't have blockers. This secures the win. At fast speed, they cannot kill the Gwen. Got him. We're up against Vayne Aatrox immediately, which is not a matchup that I usually want to face. We need a fast aggressive start if we want to beat Vayn Aatrox. I would consider keeping Qua. I think Vile Feast might be good to keep against the birds, the early birds. I don't think I keep Quietus because I need some, some more of my hollowed units if I want to compete with them at all. I could keep Vile Feast. It might be crucial in stopping the Valor plus weapon, right? So we're probably not gonna play Raiding Prodigy if they have a challenger here. Probably just pass next turn if they threaten to challenge with Fleet Fire Tracker. So, slow hand, slow hand. Only Redeem Prodigy is our... Oh. So... So no challenge for them. Which means we can Redeem Prodigy next turn if we're willing to tank for damage. We could also Vile Feast now, but if we Vile Feast now, we will have to spend an action next turn. To play redeem the prodigy. Would that be too bad? Maybe they don't have a 3 drop. My opponent's already impatient. We're gonna keep them that way. So I think we should do this now. I think most of their 3 drops aren't really good. Oh, they have Vayne. Might have been a mistake. I think I should have just played redeem the prodigy. Vayne is a good blocker into redeem the prodigy. So I guess we'll just have to kill Vayne here. So they have that too. So we just attack like this. They're gonna be forced to kill the Redeem Prodigy, I think. It's fine. Petrocide bro Broadwing going down to one health. It's okay. We have the Opulent Foyer next turn. It's fine. They will draw Aatrox next turn once they equip the Darken Harp. Yeah, I realized they had Vayne. Vayne was their t 3 drop. Would have been just... Ooh, hi. Do we use Glimpse Beyond? Or do we need the mana? We might need the mana for Defiant Dance. Maybe Glimpse Beyond is not the way to go yet. I think I want to Black Flame the Ghastly Band. I probably want to do this. And then attack with the spiderling. <laughs> That's fine. So I just attack with the ribbon dancer instead. So we have a good hand. We could go redeemed prodigy so that we can use ribbon dancer next turn. I like that. I don't mind getting more hallowed stacks. 
They need to use a strike spell if they want to use my. That's fine. If they're using their mana like this, it's fine for me. They, they play Aatrox next turn, I use Defiant Dance. Very okay with this. My turn 2 was a misplay though, I forgot about Vayne, and you shouldn't forget about Vayne. So we just Defiant Dance here, probably twice. So every time they play Aatrox, we just Defiant Dance. I think we might have a shot to win this one. So we could Phantom Butler. If we play Gwen, they play Aatrox, but then we already have uh, 3 Hallowed Deaths. Which means Gwen goes up to 3 attack next turn. Right, we can Gwen. I will do it like this because I want the fearsome damage to go through. I need to start damaging them. They probably blocked the Petroside Broadwing here. You need to block one more time. Cool, cool. I think we just go for Ribbon Dancer now. And then we go for Defiant Dance next turn again. There's too much pressure. So we want them to force block with one of these. I think Ribbon Dancer is fine. We still have Defiant Dance and uh, Dragon Ambush to attack twice again next turn. Forcing them to block here is great. So next turn they might go down with Aatrox and we just use Defiant Dance again. And then they'll be forced to block with their Quinn. So we just defi we just ribbon dancer for now. Ribbon dancer will force the Quinn block, and then they use Aatrox. We use Defiant Dance. They have to play a unit here. We just Defiant Dance, and then we win. GG. Got him. I misplayed on turn two, but that's about it. Turn two, I should have just played. I just should have just taken four damage, played Redeem Prodigy, and then go in for the clean attack. Victor Seraphine is usually a good matchup for us. This could be a game where we could keep Irelia, but I think we'd rather look for other engines. Someone just miscalled me. And I think it's for the work that I'm applying for. I didn't see the call. Shit. So they're not playing anything, we just play our units as usual. And we go for an attack next turn. If they do this, it's fine. We just get hallowed deaths. Irelia? We don't want to play Irelia into a removal spell. Maybe we just pass for now? I don't want to trade my bo I mean, I'm okay trading, but I'd rather not. So if we Irelia, Irelia just gets Mystic Shot. We want to play with backup of Twin Disciplines. We just pass again. -la 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 -la. I'm gonna go Gwen this turn. If Gwen dies, we have another one. Ideally, we get Irelia down next turn. Ah, sure. Ah, I saw the missed call and I got anxiety. Drop the bomb, fine. And an invoke. 
Invoke will be anything, so I'm not gonna play around it, but we just know that they have one invoke. It's likely a removal spell, right? This might be a Gravitum? Okay. So it, if it was a Gravitum, would it be in our best interest to attack? No, we just play Irelia first. It was not a Gravitum, it was indeed a Crescendum to go wide. I think I'd like to remove a blocker for, from them. I want to force them to do some blocks here. We still have enough mana for Twin Disciplines if they go for anything funny. So if they're gonna do that, I think I'd like to protect my Gwen. To exert pressure. We lose the ability to flawless do it, but I think that's more than fine. They usually don't want to block the quick attacks. So I'm gonna attack like this. It's a lot of damage, man. I love it! Easy glimpse beyond. And they're spending so much mana for this. I just play another Gwen. Can even Eternal Dancers if we want to. I think we play Eternal Dancers next turn. We have enough mana for glimpse beyond again. Oh, they have Ruination? They're not running Ruination, there's no way. If they're running Ruination, they deserve to win. They are not running Ruination. This will revive a Gwen no matter what, right? Uh, so we just attack like this. Got him. So our great, our best matchups are against back alley bardex. We just keep pressuring them, they can't deal with the pressure. 